Hey everybody, it's Sean here from Shooty School. Today we're discussing the Song Creator and Easy Drummer 3. This is going to be a three-part video series. The first one, this one's going to be the longest because we're literally going to create an entire song from scratch with the Easy Drummer 3 Song Creator. The second video is going to be about editing that song, which will be a much shorter video. And lastly, the third video will be about using arrangements and creating your own arrangements plus advanced workflows and the quirks that we found in Song Creator. So that's that is the scoop. You don't have to watch all these videos in order, but if you're like the college course type person, maybe you do want to watch them in order, okay? If you don't want to see any ads on my videos, do subscribe, ring the bell, watch my videos right away because I don't put ads on my videos until they reach 1,000 views. Let's get started. It's possible for you to make a song in the time it takes to click and drag with your mouse just a few times in Song Creator, but the quality of the outcome is why you might put some time into not only learning the Song Creator inside and out with me, but also discussing some different workflows. And I'll share some of my producing opinions with you as well for those of you looking for inspiration. If the Song Creator ends up being the Swiss Army tool Tool for you. Consider getting used to the colors on the top of the screen. The Song Creator has such a small visible presence, it may not seem like a weapon of mass music production, but it is. A lot of people, especially beginners, spend a lot of time crafting a single drum beat using one of the many Easy Drummer 3 features. And TuneTrack has always promoted the use of the Song Creator by having an option for it in the many drop down menus throughout the entire program. Just finished creating a beat in the new bandmate feature? Use the menu up here. Or simply right click on your MIDI file like this. Even right out of your bandmate search results list here. You can right click on any MIDI file in the Grooves tab or from a file in your song track and send them to the song creator. And besides these right click menus, you can drag any drum file to the Song Creator button, including from an occupied tap to find drop zone. So let's pretend this is the beat that inspires me to write an entire song based on it and drag it to the Song Creator button. Once the Song Creator is launched, you work in this narrow horizontal workspace and the Arrangement button is activated by default, which looks meaningful, but maybe the song parts should be the first thing that is viewed and the rest ignored for now. The Arrangement portion of Song Creator are covered in detail in my other Song Creator video, link in the description. The source file that we chose is in two places simultaneously. It's in the second Song Parts column where it says Source File, and it's on the left here, where you can audition it or clear it like this. To close the Song Creator, you can hit this X button. To open the Song Creator with a blank slate or to continue where you left off, you can simply click the Song Creator button. And lastly, we will re-engage the Song Creator by dragging our beat back into this other, bigger MIDI drop zone. I'll switch back to the drums tab just for some better scenery. Before we enter a possibly lengthy sorting process, let's take note that different colors represent different song parts. The color key I put at the top of the screen matches the bottom of every song creator sorting column. We can see a thin colored line. The reason why you may want to take the energy to acknowledge or even memorize which color is which song part is not only for Easy Drummer 3's song creator, but your organization in the song track during any type of songwriting workflow. Also keep in mind when you're using other tune track software, song parts maintain their colors with the one exception that in Easy Keys the pre-chorus is orange instead of yellow, and in Superior Drummer 3 the endings and outros are interchangeable in song creator, so some Sometimes the MIDI blocks are blue or red. It's a fantastic visual workflow for users that depend on prefabricated MIDI to compose with or are looking for song structure recommendations. We should also acknowledge where Easy Drummer 3 Song Creator gets its MIDI from, which is your entire TuneTrack MIDI collection, depending on what you've purchased, plus your user MIDI and third-party linked folders. That's right, TuneTrack MIDI is incorporated in your song creator results. You should unlink these folders if you want them excluded like this. And then in the future when you want them back, you just go up here and you browse for them and get them back. You can also use your third-party MIDI as a source file in Song Creator. 
If you only have Easy Drummer 3, your song creator results will derive from these two folders. If you upgraded from Easy Drummer 2, you'll probably have this folder as well, equaling thousands and thousands of MIDI files combined. Also incorporated specifically in my song creator results, because I have serious buying habits, are the files from my Easy X purchases, my Superior Drummer purchases, and Drum Tune Track MIDI packs if I have them installed. One thing that bothers me a little is you cannot tell Song Creator what MIDI products to exclude from your results, so there's no need to exclude filters or folders. Whatever is in your Grooves tab is fair game for the Song Creator to pull from. Now that we have our main beat loaded, which is considered a verse in this instance, we can audition it here by mousing over it and revealing the small play button icon, along with any other verse beat that the song creator has recommended for us. The next groove has less kick hits, and as you move further along, we'll hear different variations or alternatives. And this is the idea, it's to find better parts, even if it replaces your original source file. Also, as an option, maybe Song Creator has found a better verse based on the original drum MIDI file that you've presented to it. Let's say verse 5 that has the open hi-hats, maybe this groove better represents your entire song you want to create more than the source file. If that's the case for you, you could redrag that groove to the MIDI drop zone here and have the song creator pull new parts from your MIDI collection and recreate song part options for your entire song all over again. It's just an option to refine your results and take note, the undo command works great here if you change your mind and want to revert to your prior source MIDI file. In this case, I do like the open hi-hats as the source file, so I'll go up and hit redo to get that back. Now that we've committed to a source file, every file in every song part column has been updated, and we'll simply audition any and all these files to find the song parts we think will work with our song. In this video, I'm just teaching you how to use the song creator. In upcoming videos, after we know how to operate it, we'll make an actual song and discuss advanced workflows. So for me, I personally like two measures of count-ins at the beginning of my song, since I'll probably be recording to this track. So I'll look in my Easy Drummer 2 count-ins folder and drag two of them down. Now, if you don't own any products with count-ins, just create one real quick with Tap to Find, like this. and drag them to your song track. I now have two measures of four counts here. Now I will find an intro beat by auditioning the intros. Remember, I have a large library of MIDI, so we will not experience the same results here. I'm just gonna choose the first file since it's not a backbeat and it appears to be intro-like. I'll just click and drag it to the timeline. Playing it out of the timeline, we'll notice the dynamic change near the end, which is great because it helps transition out of the intro into the verse, which we'll start auditioning parts for now. I'm going to use my source file since I've already decided it best represents my song. I'll drag it to the song track. I can see visually it has a fill at the end by observing the MIDI dots, but for me personally, I know not to sweat the small stuff up front. It may slow down my momentum to keep moving quickly. Sometimes in the first verse of a song, the length is doubled since the beginning of the story is being established. So I could drag another verse here, as we've done before, or I could hold Control, Option on Mac, and click drag the verse out to duplicate it like this. Let's find a pre-chorus, but let's not work without being mindful and wasting time. Let's hear the verse beat for a second and get it in our heads so we can better predict a good groove to transition to. Now let's audition pre-choruses. I don't like the big hits in the first three variations. They broadcast too much of a statement that I think a chorus should have instead. 
and it's okay if you disagree with me. Beginners might greatly benefit from my banter, so I'll continue to provide my opinions throughout this video. Otherwise, your opinion is valid for you and mine is for me. Now, pre-chorus numbers four and five provide instability or suspense in my opinion. These words and feelings that I just mentioned will need to be resolved, which is what a chorus of a song should be doing. So I want either of these two beats, four or five. I see this suspenseful beat as pitching the baseball right over the plate so the chorus can then hit it and do its job, hit it right out of the park. I'll take pre-chorus four. If I hit spacebar, it will stop playback of a song part in Song Creator, but spacebar will not start a selected song part in Song Creator. It will play back the song track. Just a quick note that might frustrate you until you acknowledge this behavior. Let's find a chorus, which to me is the most important decision. Auditioning. Chorus 5 has the energy. I want to hear a glimpse of the pre-chorus first. Listen as I hit the space bar on the song track, and then audition a song part in the song creator in real time with the song creator play button to see if the beats work together. A cool auditioning trick. Yeah, this should work fine, especially with the fill buildup at the end of the pre-chorus. Yes, near-perfect drum transition. If we're hearing music along with this, we might think differently. I'll zoom out using these little handles here. Now that I have a chorus, I think it's okay to judge how long the pre-chorus should be, and it will be a fun test to see if we agree or disagree with each other on the length. So try to make up your mind quickly before I reveal my thoughts on it. Let's hear it coming out of the verse. What do you think? I've got an idea. I think that was a good length, but only for the first time you hear it in the first song, Revolution. This will help us develop a story in the beginning of the song, but help not make the song five minutes long by shortening the parts later on. I also feel the same way about the verse without even hearing it, and since the bridge section is next, let's work on song structure up until the bridge. I will drag a selection around my entire song, excluding the count-ins and intro, because I don't want those in the middle of my song. I'll right-click and select Copy, and then immediately after the last groove in the song track, I will right-click and select Paste All. Now, before I click and drag this bar around to navigate the song track, I might take note that inside of this zoom bar is a world view of my color-coded grooves in the song track. This is really handy if you keep in track of the song part colors I've been mentioning. We can see without zooming out of the song track our entire song structure all of the time. I don't yet see a name for this bar in version 3.0, so I'm calling it zoom bar until further notice. If I drag its handles, I see my whole song. Now, I want my second verse to be half as long, so I'll select one of the verses by clicking it to isolate it from the group selection I just pasted. And then simply right click and select remove. I also want my pre-chorus to be half as long here. So I'll mouse over the beginning of the file since I want to preserve the fill at the end of it and click drag until four measures are removed. Now I want to fill these gaps. Easy Drummer does not have a ripple delete feature that you might have in your DAW, so we must manually drag the MIDI blocks where we want them. It's a piece of cake for individual files, just click and drag. But for multiple files, you must drag a selection first before click dragging. 
There are literally a ton of key commands and alternate methods that I'm not discussing in this video in order to stay on topic, so do look for my song track editing video on my channel. Now, the second revolution of my song has been well produced for time, I'm ready to find a bridge section. Auditioning. These are pretty drastically different sections in which I would agree that half of the time bridges are meant to be an interlude. Otherwise, a lot of bridges are similar song extensions to the already established song parts in your song. If the latter is the case for you, feel free to find a bridge section from a different column like verse or chorus. And after choosing it and dragging it to the song track, simply right click and relabel it as a bridge section to keep the color coordinated workflow as you can see I've done here. But in my case here, I want a more dramatic bridge. So I'll use something from the song parts bridge column. I'll use bridge one and bridge six song parts. Bridge six has a good default transition for going back into the verse for my third song revolution. Now let me select the second song revolution by left clicking the second verse. It's easy to identify since we know verses are blue. Then I'll hold shift on my keyboard and select the next chorus, which is purple. As you can see, we've selected the beat in between our two selections. It's a great way to do group selections. Now that we've made a group selection, we can now copy it by right clicking and selecting copy. And again, selecting paste all right after the last MIDI file in the song track. Songs typically have a double chorus at the end, so I'll left click the last chorus to unattach it from its group, and then I'll hold Control, Option on Mac, and click drag the last chorus over. I'll listen to the end of the chorus file and imagine if I need an ending or not. Let me audition the endings. A lot of these endings already have full beats attached to them. If, if you have the dexterity with your mouse, you can fast forward through these endings uh, or, or on any song creator beat so you can hear what the last notes sound like faster with this little tiny moving, you know, timeline down here. Just try and click on it. Ending five is a little cheesy, but I will use it to complete a typical song structure. I would expect to hear something like this from a live performance ending. Actually, it's really bad. Uh, I'll just choose ending one, which isn't even an ending style file. It's just a single hit on beat one, which actually works a lot of the time. Now that I've completed my song structure, you should consider doing it yourself too on your end, just as we've done in this video. Because in the next song creator video that I have, link is in the description, we're going to produce the song and work on the transitions, work on the fills, just anything to help make this track more presentable. Okay, the link's in the description. If you want to hang out with other like-minded TuneTrack users, uh, do check out the Facebook and Discord group. Link's in the description. If I've ever made your day, consider contributing to me, and I hope you rock on.